Hey there! You must be wondering why I'm so excited today. So, here's the thing. I just learned an amazing magic trick that lets me read people's minds. Ooh, it sounds intriguing, doesn't it? In fact, I can try it on you right now. Okay, so let me try this on you. This has a little bit of calculations involved, so I suggest you quickly grab a paper and pen to do the calculations. Don't worry, the calculations are very simple. Just follow my instructions step by step, okay? First, think about a number, any number between 1 and 9 in your head, okay? Next, whatever this number is, add 5 to it, which means if your number is 2, you add 5 to it, so that becomes 7. Cool? Now, double the answer and then subtract 2 from it. Going good so far? Okay, next, divide this number by 2 and then subtract your original secret number from the number that you have now. Done that? Brilliant. Now, time for me to read your mind. Mm, let me focus on the energy that your mind is radiating. I can see the answer forming in my mind now. It's a little blurred, but it's getting clearer and clearer. I can see the number you have after all the calculation. And the number is 4. Haven't I got it right? Mind-blowing, isn't it? Well, let me tell a little secret, but make sure you keep it just between us. I cannot really read your mind. You heard it right. This was just a very basic, simple trick on numbers. In fact, if you go on the internet and look for number tricks, you will find thousands and thousands of them. This is exactly why I'm so fascinated by the world of numbers. Well, how about we do a quick recap on the types of numbers that we studied in the 9th standard? Great, let's do it. We first studied natural numbers or counting numbers that start with 1 and go on till infinity. Next, when we include 0 in this set of natural numbers, we get a new group called whole numbers which include 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on till infinity. And when we add negative numbers to this set, that is the numbers that are less than zero and on the left side of the origin on the number line, we get integers which have negative numbers from minus infinity to minus one, then zero, and then natural numbers from one to infinity. Now, you must have studied fractions too that come between the integers. And on including them, we get a group called rational numbers, which can be expressed in the form of P by Q, where P and Q are integers, and Q, that is the denominator, is not equal to zero. Finally, all the numbers that cannot be expressed in the form of fractions, that is P by Q, were called irrational numbers, and this complete set of rational and irrational numbers are together called real numbers. Which brings me to the topic we study in the video. It is real numbers. So all set to begin. Now, we have already studied about these different subsets of real numbers and how we can perform basic mathematical operations on them. Whenever we learn something in mathematics, we always want to know whether all that theoretical knowledge has any practical applications at all. And what better to find this than solving an everyday problem using the division algorithm. So imagine this, your class has 400 boys and 120 girls. And your teachers asks all of you to arrange yourselves in such a way that boys and girls form equal numbers of rows but minimum number of columns. In how many columns can you all arrange yourselves 
to meet these conditions. So here, we want minimum number of columns, which means it will directly impact the number of rows, which will be the maximum. Before we jump into solving this, let us try to understand what has to be done by considering a problem with smaller numbers. Say we have 12 boys and 8 girls, we have to arrange them in equal number of rows and minimum number of columns. Now, if we arrange all of them in two rows, we'll have six column of boys and four column of girls, which gives us a total of six plus four, ten columns. Can we arrange them in three rows each? Well, we can't because in that case, we'll have two columns of girls with total six girls and remaining two girls will be in a different column. And we won't meet the condition of having equal number of rows. So let's divide them into four rows each. That way, the 12 boys will be divided into three columns and the eight girls will be divided into two columns. Therefore, the total number of columns we have will be five. Naturally, we can't divide them into five, six, seven or eight rows because that will result in unequal rows. So to fulfill all conditions, we need to divide a group of 12 boys and eight girls into four rows each. And then we will have three columns of boys and two columns of girls. And this gives us four as the HCF, highest common factor of 12 and 8, which are the number of boys and girls respectively. With that in mind, let's go back to our original question. We have to divide 400 boys and 120 girls into rows of equal and maximum values and minimum number of columns. And if we apply the logic we just did, we can find those maximum and minimum values by finding the HCF of 400 and 120. The HCF will give us the maximum number of rows so that we get the minimum number of columns. Now, by Euclid's algorithm, we divide 400 by 120 and get quotient as 3 and the remainder as 400 minus 360, which is 40. So 400 is equal to 120 into 3 plus 40. Now since remainder 40, we need to continue dividing until we reach the remainder of 0. In the next step, we divide 120 by 40 and get the quotient as 3 and the remainder as 0. Therefore, 120 is equal to 40 into 3 plus 0. This marks the end of the algorithm and we get the HCF of 400 and 120 as the divisor which is 40. And that means that you will have to divide the boys and girls in your class into 40 rows each such that the number of columns having boys is equal to 400 by 40, which is 10. And the number of columns having girls is 120 by 40, which is 3. To conclude, there will be 40 rows of boys in 10 columns and 40 rows of girls in 3 columns. Solved it, didn't we? Wonderful. But you know what? Just knowing that this is how division works is not really enough. Aren't you curious to find out where this method has come from? How did we arrive upon this process? Did someone just discover it? Or did someone have a eureka moment? And at this point, I know it seems a little too much to take in, but don't worry. You'll realize it's actually very simple. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, Download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.